The wind is incredibly strong today. You can easily see how civilization would be buried under these sands. <laughs> so did we randomly fi find someone or? I don't even know what I'm looking for. Like there's something white and creamy. The Takumkan is the biggest desert in China. It's this constant battle between water and sand, life and death. On the other hand, it's a curse because people here are constantly fighting against the desert, trying to preserve area that they live on. There's actually a lot of things happening here to connect people, to bring more hope and development to the communities living around the desert. With the right approach, human beings can work with nature and create habitable places for all of us. You need to really be on site and look at these materials to have those hands-on, intimate experiences whether they be present day or in the past. The excitement and the feeling of freedom in the middle of this desert with no one around, it was magical. The frontier of China, the heart of Eurasia. My name is Nico de Rouge, I'm French. I specialize in reportage and documentary photography, which takes me around the world. I'm in Yutian County, in the Hotan region in South Xinjiang. And this road here leads to the village of Dariabui. It's a very famous village for being the last village of Taklamakan Desert at the end of the Kaya River. Tulhong, he's a very experienced off-road driver, and we're going to go on an adventure together in the desert to the village. Around the Taklamakan, we have a lot of oases, and they depend on water supply. If there's no water, there's no civilization. And I'm here in Rochang County to visit an archaeological site called Milan. And Milan gives us an indication of the lost civilizations here in the Tarim Basin along the Taklamakan. My name is Neil Schmidt. I'm an American and a historian of China. As a researcher, I work at an archaeological site in Dunhuang. When explorers first came here in the late 1900s, uh, able to travel by river, which starts way up in the Kunlun Mountains and flows all the way into the Taklamakan, that feeds the oases on the southern part of Xinjiang. I might have found something. This is not He's saying it's not. I'm Hasna. I come from Morocco, from Casablanca. I came here to China to be working in architecture. I am here on the riverbed of Yulong Kashi River in Hotian City. Hotian is known for the jade. The major deposits of Hotian jade are tucked away deep in the Kunlun Mountains. And it has been brought by the Yulong Kashi River down here in this place where it created a kind of custom for the people to just pick it up from the ground. If gold and diamonds have monetary, aesthetical, and cultural values in the West. Here, it's the jade that has a capital Chinese history importance. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I guess something white and creamy. Actually, after many years of exploration, I guess there aren't many jades left, but to just look for it, searching and hoping, it's quite meditative. I like it. It's relaxing. So we're running into some action here. This SUV over there is stuck inside of the river. So we're trying to get him out. So two cars trying to pull this out of the ground. Tu Hong over there is organizing the whole rescue. Look at him. Let's see. 
I don't know how it's going to be able to drive through. That's crazy. So this area was a large fort here in Milan. And looking across this plain, it might not seem like much, but if you look very closely, you can see faint lines. And those lines are man-made. And from those lines, we know that this area was farmed intensively, that it was once green with fields and trees. From Western Han to the Tang Dynasty, a rich mix of cultures flourished here. But soon after, the desert encroached deeper and deeper into the oasis, swallowing all traces of civilization. The once rich agricultural community with its irrigation system developed 2,000 years ago that showcased the ingenuity and perspicacity of the inhabitants sank into the sand. So once agriculture began to blossom and trade was carried out along the silk roads here, and Codanese jade was a highly valued commodity. Look at this size. Look at these sellers everywhere. It's a huge market. This place makes you understand the importance of it and how it's a big deal here, actually. Look how they're taking good care of their appearance. They're always watering it so that it's shiny and clean. <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. Too much stones everywhere. We'll go over there. There's a nice passage up there. Let's go over here. many shapes, big shapes, small shapes, rounded, square. Hot and jade comes in many colors. The mutton fat jade is the most valued by the Chinese people. Check the wool shops here. The price for this one is 280,000. Look at this, I mean, it's, it's like a few thousand years old. Check the wool shops here. <laughs> I found that quite beautiful jade in this region. It brings economically a lot of benefits to its people, for them to feed their families and live by their natural resources that they had in the land. After six hours of driving, we just arrived at Dariyaburi village. It's super quiet here. I don't see anyone on the streets, but there is a house over there. I'm gonna go and see if there is people inside it. We often think of the desert as a lifeless place, but here, it actually looks like a big oasis all around. Hello. <laughs> Before coming here, the only things I knew about Dariyaburi village was that it got discovered in the 1890s. Oblam just showed me around his house and his yard, which is pretty huge. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Living conditions here are still quite tough. It's impossible to get proper education and a good health care. And that's why there was a new Daliabuli village built a couple of hours from here. So it's a little bit sad to see a traditional village like Daliabuli get empty. Just like in most parts of the world, it's a natural evolution of people wanting to find better life conditions and start life from there. 
the desert, it's both a curse and a blessing. It's a curse because people here are constantly fighting against the desert, trying to preserve area that they live off. This is a little example of what's left of the vast number of monasteries and stupas that populated the city of Milan. And these were possible because of the agriculture and the trade that passed up and down the silk road. Once the fields were no longer maintained, the trees were no longer there to prevent the sand from flowing over the fields. And this is what it looks like today. We just drove 200 kilometers through the desert from Dariaburi to the new village where kids just got out of school. Let's see if we can find Obol's grandson. <laughs> I'm here to meet Marway. He's a jewelry artist at the forefront on incorporating hot and shade and modern jewelry pieces. I love this place. Is it your workplace? Can we take a look?因为我父亲是移民国家级的玉雕大师我出生的时候就是在玉器工厂里出生的到现在为止可能我做玉雕已经二十年的时间玉雕是中国传统的民间艺术有着历史悠久的文化作为底蕴审美对玉雕来说不
it's really unbelievable, just full of life. I heard this was the very first restaurant in Tajong. Let's go see. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 I'm called Guan Hongyu. Guan Hongyu. Ray, how many people do you receive here every day? I don't think there are many people here. Look, we have people here, people here, people here, people here. When we were walking on this road, there were about 100 miles of road. There was no place to eat. It was a bit crazy at that time. I wanted to stay on this road and see it. At that time, there was no water. We were all from the distance. 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 I'm here 60 kilometers away from the Chiemo County in southeast Xinjiang. And this is the construction site of the Hoiro Railway. The railway follows the northern foot of the Kondon Mountains and the southern edge of the Taklamakan Desert. So the Taklamakan Desert is so large. So most people, based in the different oases that are spread around, with this railway, people can travel in and out of Xinjiang way easier. As a documentary and industrial photographer, I'm super excited to shoot such a mega project, especially in a challenging environment like this one. I'm about to meet Wang Jingzhong. He's the director of the whole Hoiro railway project. Nanjiang <laughs> I'm here to meet Dr. Zheng Tanjiang, who's been leading this sand control project in Sola for over 20 years. How <laughs> This is a beautiful place. Now, why did you build this sand sand? In 1988, the sand sand was built in the first place. The sand sand was built in the first place. The sand sand was built in the first place. We built it and built it and built it. We built it and built it. We built it and built it. The sand sand was built in the first place. The sand sand was built in the first place. The sand sand was built in the first place. Oh, wow! That's a real fish farm. 种的有菜，有葱，有香菜，有生菜。哦、oh, wow. ，樱桃树， oh. 这个快熟了，看不看到？是吧？看出来了。嗯，可算。<笑>看看我们的后花园，<笑>西瓜苗、香梨树，还有苹果树。我们都来到这块儿，就是为了把这个地方做得越来越好嘛。你看，我都来二十年了，从最初的无到现在的一片绿色。以前最初是我一户，现在都变成至少有几千人在这块儿。肯定将来越变越好。嗯，这是百分之百的。嗯。你好，我叫王立博，我是咱们河若铁路 S 五标的项目经理啊，咱们的组发账，在现场做一下。This is a fence made out of reeds. It's the first barrier in their whole sand control system here to prevent sand from getting to the railway. So it's the first step. The objective is to keep the sand out. Hello. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? They're taking roots. Right? Yeah. My name is Abdullah and I'm from Pakistan. We are digging just to collect the root samples, oh. examine the root, mm -hmm. how they respond towards the water scarcity. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I try? <laughs> So, <laughs> so this is not easy work. I already, I'm already bleeding from a finger just from installing a few. Look at it. They have to install two per mesh, and that's all the way along. He was explaining to me that in the summer, the temperature here gets up to 43 to 48 degrees. Must be tough. The sand control is not easy. It takes a lot of different methods, but it also takes a lot of backbreaking work. And so it was impressive to see, especially these young people, being interested in this very, very important research. It's crazy to think that you have a railroad project, but a whole department of the whole project is solely allocated to sand control so that the rest of the project can move along.
，经过这这么多年的工作，我们缔结的纯粹至上，可以说是你死我活的关系，也确确实是为了人类生存。第二个发展阶段就是要把沙地收回来以后，变废为宝。第三阶阶段，人与沙，它的这个和谐。你好，你好，欢迎到塔中植物园来。哎，我是叫长青，长青，长青，长青。水银，咸的。<笑>红的耐盐的植物很多都是带咸味的。It is hard to believe, but actually, I'm in a botanical garden in the center of Taklamakan Desert. It's the world's only garden of this sort. I'm here to meet Changqin, who is a chief botanist who has led this project for 19 years. What's the idea behind creating botanical garden in the middle of the desert? Taklamagan Samo will show you a very big road. If you don't do the damage, the road will be destroyed. So we want to make sure that we can adapt to this kind of environment. We use artificial damage control techniques to make sure that the road can be safe. The biggest impact is the environment. The air quality has increased. And the birds and animals have become more numerous. 我在二十年前到这来的时候，这个地方是寸草不生，总感觉这个地方太荒凉、太寂寞了。这片沙地能把它做出这么绿，一般人是想象不到的，在常规人想象中算是一个奇迹吧。What's happening now is that they're bringing down the long rails from the back over there. So they're installing the rail first, and then they will move on with the machine, install the sweepers, and lay the rail on top of it. It's incredible. Hello。你好。法国的。法国的。你们呢？你们是本地人吗？山西。山西。可以说沙漠化防治这个话题啊，也不仅仅是咱们中国的话题，是全球面临的。我们把策了模式，推广到条件类似区域，是一种沙漠